up one more time for Evan and the team. Evan didn't know this, but uh, when I started in ministry like 20 years ago, uh, I played bass in our church's Spanish language ministry band. Now, here's the thing, I don't, I don't speak Spanish and I don't speak bass, honestly, uh, but I was an intern and I needed somebody. And what I knew back then was anytime the pastor requested La Montaña, he was about to do work. And so I feel like any sermon goes up like seven levels anytime you sing that song. I'm so grateful for you guys setting an atmosphere that we go for Jesus. I'm grateful for you guys worshiping Jesus. Um, let's, let's get going. Thank you. Excited, grateful for Social Club Misfits and just the way that they uh, just came and just rocked the house for us. Uh, and then Evan Craft and the team leading us well as well. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Mike. If you, uh, if you. So I need to explain that because otherwise you're going to think I have like all these children that I don't father well. Um, back in March, I spoke at a camp and, and I told the story that I was at a David Crowder band concert and I walked out on the stage. Oh, I didn't walk out on the stage. That, that would have got me arrested back then. But David Crowder was leading and it was like this quiet moment of worship. Nobody was saying anything and I yelled out, David Crowder's my dad. And he stopped and said, no, I'm not. And so I told that story at camp, and the kids started calling me their dad, and no, I'm not. And so you guys can be seated if you, if you want to be. Uh, if you have a Bible, uh, we're going to be in Titus chapter 3. If you don't have a Bible, no worries. Uh, we'll, we'll, you'll be able to follow along. Um, let me say a couple of things. Let me say some thank yous, and then I want to tell a story. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm just so humbled to be here with you. Um, and so I'm thankful for all of the ministry leaders here from the Santa Cruz area, all of you. Uh, thankful for all the team that's putting it on, uh, the production guys who you got, nobody pays attention to until something goes wrong, but they've just been killing it. Um, and then I want to thank my family. They're not here. They'll be here with me tomorrow. Uh, but my wife uh, is like wrestling with two little kids right now trying to get them to go to sleep so I can be with you. So I'm grateful for all of that. The other thing I want to say is this. I, I realize that we've got this weird thing going on in our world where people get really excited about things that they have no, they can take no credit for. And so here's what I mean. Um, earlier when Social Club Misfits were out here, they, made, they said, hey, make some noise if you're 90s babies. And some of you were like, yeah! I'm like, you're not responsible for that. Like, you didn't pick to be born in the 90s. But there's this weird thing, right, where like people are super into their decade. And so like I was born in the 80s, and so if you're born, if I said, right, so like, most, like if you're in a youth group, and you're a student in a youth group, and you were born in the 80s, something went really wrong with your education. Uh, so I assumed that that was all adults. And so if I was like, who was born in the 70s, some of you would make noise. If I said, this is gonna make me feel super old. If I was like, it's, yell if you were born in the 2000s. And, And I'm not really sure why you're so proud of that because like the Lord, like you didn't say to the Lord, it'd be best if you put me in the 2000s. Like you had no control. And so everybody's serious about their decade, but I'm just gonna be the first one to say it. The 80s were weird. And here's why the 80s were weird, because we didn't have cell phones and like portable video games. And so we had to figure out how to entertain ourselves and our parents didn't really care that much. And so we just did ridiculous stuff. Like for instance, when I was in school, one of the games that we would play to entertain ourselves was a game called Pencils. And what you did is you took a pencil, and the other person took a pencil, and you tried to use your pencil to snap their pencil. I, I don't know why this was fun, but we did it. Or, I don't know if girls did this because I never went to the girls' restroom, but in the boys' restroom in, in Oklahoma, where I grew up, like, we would play a game called Knuckles. And so apparently you guys still play that. You should stop it. Um, but if you don't know what that is, like people would just bang their hand against the wall or punch the wall until their knuckles bled. And whoever's knuckles bled first lost. Or the other game that we played growing up was a game called Mercy. And so if you don't know what mercy is, mercy is basically you intertwine fingers with somebody and you try to bend their fingers and their wrists until they scream out mercy. 
Now here's the thing. If, if you're good at mercy, you use mercy to get things in life. So I got a nephew who's a year and a half younger than me, and when we would play Mercy, I would grab his hands and I would twist his fingers back, and I would like threaten to break them, and he'd be like, give me mercy, and I'd be like, not till you promise to do my chores for the next two months. Give me mercy, not till you promise to carry my backpack to school every, from now until graduation. Like I would try and get whatever I could out of it, and then he would do whatever I wanted because he desperately wanted mercy. And I say that because the thing that I want you guys to hear tonight as we get ready to go into Titus is that gospel people respond to mercy. That when mercy is offered to you, it changes the way that you live, that you respond to mercy in a profound way that changes everything about you. And I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the mercy of God that's been given to us, and my hope is that you will respond to it. So let me pray one more time, and then we'll jump into the word. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity here on the beach with friends that I know and friends that I'm getting to know, the opportunity to talk about who you are. And Lord, I pray for somebody who doesn't know you, that this would be a great invitation to know your mercy and to respond to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen? All right, Titus uh, chapter 3 is where we're going to be, but I think I need to give you a little bit of backstory. Because we're going to start in verse 3 of chapter 3, which means there's two chapters and two verses before we get here, and they're kind of important. You need to know what they're about. And so Titus is this letter that a man named Paul is writing to a young man that he mentored who's on a, in a place called Crete, and he's saying, hey, I need you to fix some things that are broken in the church here. And so the way that he would describe Crete when he's talking to Titus is he would say this in Titus 1.12. One of their very own prophets said, Cretans, or people from Crete, are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. And so if you don't know what that means, um, those aren't compliments. Like I know you and your gym bro, you're like, man, you're a beast, bro. That's not what Paul's saying. Paul's saying like they act like they're not human. They're liars and they're lazy and they eat a lot. And so Crete was the part of town that you don't want to be from. And so I don't, I don't know the Santa Cruz area, and so I'm not going to be like, if you're from such and such, like I don't know, your, your part of town could be awesome, it may not be. But I live around LA. I moved, to, I moved around L.A. like five years ago, uh, and I lived, the actual place that I live uh, until last week, I just actually moved to a new house last week, uh, was a place called Harbor City. Now, moving to L.A., I don't know anything about any community.